Hey folks, Jason, Tradesman Outdoor Adventures. Just uh, shot a quick video on a giveaway. Please see that if you haven't. But today, what we're gonna be talking about is toolkits, tool rolls, tool bags, specifically for uh, Ram 2500s, fourth and a half gen, 2019 and up. We'll probably apply to others, but something we're thinking about um, as um, like I think with most of us that tend to go off-roading, we just throw a bunch of stuff in our trucks, hoping that it'll work. And so what I've tried to do with this is actually narrow down the tools that one would actually need um, for basic level maintenance, up to like maybe mid-level maintenance on your gas-powered um, Ram 2500s, theoretically 3500s. Uh, so what I'm gonna do really quick is show you what I've had in my vehicles before um, what I found myself with and how, after actually looking at the, <laughs> the nuts and bolts of my truck, realized that I've got a lot of overkill and unused, unusable tools in some areas, and then I've got some big gaps in the others. And since I don't want you to make the same mistakes if you run into issues out on the trail, um, I've actually got a list of the tools that you'll need for some kind of a basic maintenance or repair, trail kind of repair. Um, and then we're gonna take a look at Blue Ridge Overland gears, tool bag, not the roll, I went for the big one, and uh, just see what I end up with, maybe a little bit about philosophy of tools, um, taking what you need versus what other people might need, things like that. So um, we're going to go ahead and turn now, and I'm going to show you the tools that I used to bring out on the trail or have until very recently, or even just left in the car, um, and I'm going to show you where it mount added up and kind of where I fell short. All right, so here's what I've been carrying in my truck. Now this is only hand tools. This isn't all maintenance things, but it, it pretty much comprises most of it. So if I had to do maintenance on the truck, like uh, drop a drive shaft, for example, as I had to do uh, months back, check out the video on that. I, um, I had just gone out, so I've got a lot of tools in my garage, but I just wanted a cheap and tool set that I could keep in there that I wouldn't have to hunt through and, and peck through. And I had this when I had my Ford Excursion 7.3 diesel, um, one of my favorite vehicles. Ended up getting rid of it for reliability purposes and because I thought my family would be going with me for a long time for a lot of trips and uh, they didn't really want to go. So long story, but I kept this in there for both the metric and SAE um, sockets and wrenches. So if we, and I suspect a lot of people are gonna have this. So here's what, what I thought I'd be covered by. So um, half inch, three eighths, quarter extensions, um, Allen keys. I thought I would have all, most of the wrenches I would need. So you've got quarter inch, three eighths, half, the pliers, um, Torx bits, all the screwdrivers you need, adjustable wrench if you don't have the sockets that are big enough. And then the only other extra thing that I bought, because both of those vehicles were technically three-quarter ton, big breaker bar, uh, the ubiquitous zip ties, WD-40, and a pair of um, garage grip gloves if I had to um, get dirty with things. Uh, and I just left this in there. I didn't really do anything with it. I was diligent to never pull anything out of this because I always wanted it to be in there and I wanted to know what I had. Um, but I admit, on the excursion, I did a fair bit. I never really had to do any trail repairs on that, so I always had access to my bigger toolbox with 10 times as many tools in it. So I never really used this. I never really paid a lot of attention to it. I just knew it was in there. Um, but I got to thinking about this because it does take up a lot of room. And I was thinking, you know, how much of this do I actually need on a Ram 2500? Well, um, let's actually take a look. I went through the whole underside. I didn't shoot a video of it, but I have a list here of the different sizes uh, of things that you're going to need. I will probably try to post it in the um, video description as well if I have enough characters. But uh, I was a little surprised. So let's take a look at that. All right, crew, let's go through what I found underneath the truck and under the hood. Um, apologies if I missed something, but I'm just gonna read through this list really quick. Everything was metric. So when you look at the toolkit that you're thinking about, you can bring standard, but if you're not 
don't need it for other people or you didn't add stuff that's standard nuts and bolts on your truck, you may not need to bring it. Anyways, so I'm gonna run up from small size sockets and wrenches to big size sockets and wrenches. Sorry, I'll hold this a little bit more comfortably. Apologize for my list reading. Nothing was eight millimeters, nothing was nine millimeters. 10 millimeters, front diff cover. So in case you had any problems on the trail, uh, you tighten up a bolt, you need 10 millimeters and the ignition coils. So if you ever had a problem where you had a bad coil or you needed to check a plug, you need a 10 millimeter in your toolkit. Nothing that was 11 uh, millimeters or 12 millimeters, excuse me, millimeters. Uh, what you will need for almost everything is a 13 millimeter. That is your oil pan, your rear diff bolts, your front diff. Um, uh, in my case, I have the Carly extra guard in the front. Those are affixed with a different size. That's for 13 millimeters. Um, if you need to remove that or you need to snug that up. Um, some of the battery attachments for mine, at least, uh, I do have the factory wired winch. Uh, and, I, and I forgot to add that there was also a 10 millimeter uh, fixture on the batteries. Um, so 10 and 13 for the batteries and um, yeah, uh, so that's a lot, so you need 13s. Uh, 15 millimeters all around for the sway bar bushings. You should not need that in a trail repair, but I did blow out a sway bar end link on the excursion when I was out on the trail, uh, out on Bald Mountain Jeep Trail, um, broke one of the bushings, so I had to have that taken off. So it could happen on this rig. I don't know, but that's what you need a 15 for. 60 millimeter front and rear brake caliper pins. So the slider pins, those are 15 millimeters. And also the factory skid plates. So I will say skid plates, because you've got those bars and then you've got the actual plates. All of the uh, hardware affixing those, 15 millimeters. Some of those you need to drop out to get to other parts. Um, upper shock bolts are 18 millimeters. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, 16 millimeters of brake caliper pins, nothing for 17, 18 millimeters, upper shock bolts, uh, if you need to work on those. Um, 19 millimeters sway bar end links for the rear. I, mine, I didn't really check the front because I have a detachable sway bar, so I don't know if it's different for mine because it's a power wagon. Um, also important, 19 millimeters rear and front drive shaft bolts. Ask me how I know. Nothing for 20, 21 millimeters, the actual caliper bolts, that, so that are the fixed the caliper bracket, front and rear, um, and then the front sway bar end links were 21 millimeters. 22 millimeters for your lug nuts. Uh, you probably have the, uh, you keep the, just the tire iron from the factory in your vehicle. You probably got that covered, but sometimes it's also nice to have. The transfercation, your three eighths inch ratchet, or I guess a breaker bar, if you ever had a leak or you had to swap out the fluid, hopefully you won't have to do that on the trail, but it could happen. So 3 8 inch ratchet. And then some other things that I didn't really spend a lot of time thinking about, but are important, Torx, Torx fixtures. Um, the rear tail lights require a T20. So if you need to swap out a bulb, T20. Transmission bolts. I hate that my truck has a plastic transmission pan, but it does. Hopefully I never have to do anything with it on the trail, but if there is a leak, you need a T40. And then the tailgate, uh, the little back panel, you can see right there. All of these. If your factory electric um, handle stops working for some reason, I don't like this electric, I like the old school ones, you need to get in there and manually open it, you are going to need a T27. So those were all socket sizes. I think for some of the bigger things, I'd want to have wrenches as well. So if we look back at the toolkit that's behind me and we look at what's actually on the truck that I'm going to need. Now, I'm not going to disassemble the entire vehicle. I don't need to pull the bed off when I'm on the trail. And this is a new truck. It's got 26 and a something, 26,000 miles on it. But I should not be needing to do a lot of maintenance. So I think I can accept some risk. And so if I'm thinking about the trail repairs I have to make, um, let's actually, when I pull out of the case and think about what I'm going to add to the Blue Ridge Overland gear, I think I can trim down a lot. So let's take a look at a couple of things that my toolkit was lacking, I thought. And I'm gonna show you what I'm not gonna save in that gray case, what I am gonna save, and how I've supplemented it. And um, then I will go into uh, soliciting your thoughts. 
stay tuned. All right, so let's march through. Uh, I went through the kit, march through what I'm going to take and what I'm gonna add. So you'll see, I actually end up keeping a fair amount, but let's go through it by category. So definitely keeping the channel locks and the needle nose and the adjustable. I think the adjustable is gonna cover a lot of um, sins with some of the bigger end wrenches. I did add uh, a set of these, super cheap from um, a pair of vice grips from Harbor Freight. Had their uh, sidewalk sale recently. Gonna keep these. I don't have a real need for hex heads that I can see, but they're also just nice to have with you. It seems like I'm shocked at how many hex head issues have come up necessarily on the vehicle. Um, and they don't take up a lot of room. Obviously keeping all the screwdrivers and um, the, uh, um, the universal one for all these. I probably don't need all of them. I'm tempted to kind of either, I'll probably drop this one because this is the metric one. The Torx heads, remember those, I'll walk through those, and then extra screwdriver heads and whatnot, it's pretty useful to have. So actually, let's let's get rid of that one. All right, wrenches. So I had from eight millimeter, which I won't use, the whole way up to 15. So eight, 10, uh, 12, 13, 14, and 15. You heard the list. So I went ahead and added from my other tool sets, 16, 17, 18, and 19. I wish I had some other ones and so i'll probably go out and get 20 through 21 through 23 maybe they get a little pricey and i'm worried about the overall length of the bag but again hopefully that will cover for some of these if i need a wrench and i can't use a socket so i'm not really going to do anything with the uh the quarter inch drives they're just i think they don't take up a lot of room pretty easy didn't add anything to that so for the um the three eighths, uh, these went way small, um, came with a reasonable number of extensions and you've got the adjustments if you need to put more leverage and use those. Um, but I did add a few things to this. I think everybody knows at some point they're gonna need the wobbly bit. And then I added the three eighths uh, breaker bar um, just for the transfer case. Uh, if for some reason the ratchet goes out I don't know if it's necessary or not. It may or may not stay in there. So, and I think this is where kind of all the action is, just the half inch ratchet. So it came with the ratchet itself and a reasonable extension. And then the kit came from with 21, 20, 19 deep and shallow, 18 deep and shallow, 17 deep, shallow and extra deep, 16 extra deep and shallow. It's, it's kind of a mishmash how this kit came together. Uh, 15 deep and shallow, and then 14, 13, and 12 were long. And then I forgot to mention this, you will need a 5 8 inch um, spark plug um, socket if you, after you pull the coil packs, I have to look that up. This one I added some extras. So I added a longer extension and then a 22 and a 24 millimeter socket, just for some of the big stuff down below. And then I bought a, uh, a 22 and a 21 socket. So I've got sockets the whole way up. Well, my thinking is like for the lower shock bolts, I think are 22 millimeters, I think, um, to just use the ratchet. If for some reason I had to do a change out there. Obviously I am keeping the, um, the black uh, straps not the clear ones because they break down UV wise, but I'll be putting those in the kits. And then I added a whole bunch of other stuff. So things I realized I didn't have that could be a trail repair. Fuse value pack, I will break this down to something smaller, but uh, I took a picture of the fuse box underneath. All these are gonna work potentially for something. Quick weld, I, I like, if I punch a hole in my transmission pan, it's probably a day ender, a trip ender, but I've seen a lot of people just having this on hand can cover a variety of sins. Um, uh, in addition to having the, uh, the, the actual gloves, I think if you're actually doing something out there for an extended period, having, obviously I won't take all these, but thicker nitrile gloves is useful. Some of the things I didn't have were pry bars. Now I got the cheap, 
set from Harbor Freight. And I wanna to try to make sure I can keep everything as much as possible in the bag. Obviously the breaker bar is not gonna work. But these are kind of short and medium length. Um, I can't say for certain I'll use them, but these obviously can be used for a variety of uh, instances. I also realized I didn't have a hammer. So this one is, it's definitely not super nice, but it is a kind of a dead blow with a plastic head. So if you're like trying to knock a brake disc loose that's stuck, you can give it a, a tap. Um, I don't really like this. I might have to go out and get something more heavy duty, but this will start. This was something super cheap at the checkout line, but I realized everything I have in the truck is based off of headlamps and it might be nice to have a directional light and or something to toss in the back of the truck. This blinks red, solid red, and then it's got the spotlight in the middle. I did not have any electrical tape. I had no electrical gear, electrical tape, um, electrical pliers, and then I don't know if people have used these. These are the best for making wiring connections. You just have to get a lighter or a shrink or heat gun, which you won't have on the trail. See if, if a wire breaks or frays or something, so you don't have to just like use the um, castle nuts. These are awesome. I use them all the time on the excursion when the wiring is going bad. Obviously I won't have to worry about that this much here, but taking an assortment of these and putting them in the bag, it's just insurance. And then for everybody that watches Rain Man Ray's YouTube channel, who's far more successful than I am, I recognize there's something useful if you do have an oil leak, or some sort of leak, to cleaning the area so you can actually diagnose the problem. Um, I don't really want to carry a bottle that's this big. I like, for trail stuff, something this size, but I'm actually having a hard time finding a smaller can, can of brake cleaner. When I do, that will go in my kit. And then lastly, cheap insurance if you lose a radiator hose. So that I'm gonna to try to cram in the Blue Ridge Overland Gear tool bag. Let's take a look at how all that fits and then uh, have some closing thoughts. All right, folks, we got almost all of it in the bag. So first, here's the Blue Ridge Overland Gear. Uh, I got an award at work, so I splurged on the triple run bag. It is super well built. Obviously I haven't really done much of anything with it. Um, but I'm impressed with the design so far. Love these zippers. Zippers are super high quality. There's a bunch of reviews out there. I'm sure you can find them, but I will give my thoughts after I actually use it for a little while. So it comes with a patch. I think it came with the tool thing. Anyways, it's good looking gear. You can mount it on Molly or other things. This thing weighs a fair amount, so I probably won't be doing that. I'll probably go into the seat in my truck. Um, although when I get my topper on, it might get moved in the back. Anyways, we'll talk about that some other time. But let's take a look at how I organized the gear and um, how it all shaped up. So again, super nice zippers. Um, the only thing I couldn't get in the bags was this cheapo hammer, which I don't like anyways, and I might end up upgrading that to begin with, but at least it is a hammer that I have with me. So I'll get that out of the way. Um, I thought I'd have a lot more room. I'm actually a little snug uh, space-wise. Maybe I just overpacked. So let's go through each of the pockets and you tell me. So from the left, uh, zip ties and all of the um, wrenches and pliers. The zip ties were kind of like, I don't know where I'm gonna put you. And that was the one with the least amount of space when I was done. So those are all gonna go in there. Uh, in case you don't know or haven't seen it, each of these are removable. So you can just take what you need with you. You can use this as a tool tray uh, if that's what you wanna do. Uh, next one over, and this is like a semi, I would say translucent, pretty strong, so you can get, kind of generally see what is in here. Um, a lot of people will put tape on this and be like, screwdrivers um, and whatnot. Uh, I will probably just leave it like this. So anyways, um, the screwdrivers, the uh, Torx bit heads, whatnot, I did keep the hex uh, hex keys in there. And then I put the small and medium pry bars. I don't know how if I'm gonna need these, but it's probably not a bad thing to have. So those go in that pocket with all the screwdrivers. Uh, and then over here, this is kind of the mishmash pocket. Um, so in here, WD-40, uh, dielectric grease. I would like to get a smaller container of that. I will the next time I go 
to the auto parts store. So just stole a washer box, but this has those um, heat based, the shrink wrap soldering wire connectors. So I just grabbed a mishmash of those, put them in here, electrical tape, uh, hose clamps. I did throw in a bottle of Gorilla Glue. You never know when you can use that, but probably at some point. Uh, the wire pliers, and then the JB Weld, and then I threw in a container of Loctite just for those trail repairs. You gotta get something locked down, whether by you know the official repair or you just need to have something locked. I will. I was debating whether I wanted to add some gasket maker, um, but again, with the age of my vehicle, a relatively young age, I don't think I'm gonna have to. So here's what I was thinking, right? Oh my gosh, well, what if I had a front, I hit the front or rear differential really hard and I had a leak and I had to remake a seal? should I be carrying um, gasket maker? Well, I could. And if I was going on a super long trip, I would probably, then you get it. And this is a, maybe a separate video. Uh, welcome to hear your thoughts. Like, okay, well, on a day trip or a camping trip, do, are you gonna carry the gear oil to replace whatever you've lost if something does start to leak? I built this kit around like, uh-oh, my diff is leaking. I'm gonna try to salvage it as much as I can, just get me home off the trail. If, a trans, if I lose the transmission pan or the, 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 the front or rear end differential just like pukes its fluid everywhere because I've got a giant hole in the case cover, I'm probably up a creek anyways. So anyways, I, I don't think I'm going to put a gasket uh, kit maker in there, gasket maker kit in there uh, for those reasons. Uh, and then we go over here to the next pockets. And in this one, so this is all the uh, half inch. Um, I realized that when I had it laid out before, I had kind of mixed up the half inch and uh, three eighths drives. So this one, I go, is gonna go down from 22 to 15 millimeter with the extensions and obviously the ratchet. And the next one over, I combined the quarter and three eighths. So this one's pretty full. Uh, but again, I think I'd be in this one more unless I do something serious like take out a, like I lost a shock absorber or something. I could do that on the trail. Again, I wouldn't have a replacement shock absorber with me necessarily, but if I had to do a trail repair, I could. So I like having these. It's nice having the leverage. They're bigger, stronger, but the quarter and three eighths, obviously you can get in tighter spaces. And then this last one um, are all the wrenches. And this is where the area I think I need to grow is. I, so I have up to 19 or 20 millimeters. Uh, maybe just 19 is the biggest one I have. And obviously on the list I read off, there's more in there than that. So I may add a little bit more to this. And then I also added just some nitrile gloves and then these gloves just to kind of live in here. So um, this is gonna be the bag at least starting and I'm pleased with the construction. I'm pleased with everything I have in here. Um, so the only thing that won't fit right now, is the hammer will, but I think I'm going to keep the big pry bar with me just in case. You never know when you need a pry bar and then the breaker bar. And then this, if I can find a smaller can of brake cleaner, it'll go in here with the WD-40. All right, folks, that's everything. Uh, so we'll welcome your thoughts on the tool bag and the tools that I put in there. Uh, again, this is not a take apart your truck and put it back together toolkit. This is an uh-oh, I broke something on the trail kind of kit I need to get home with maybe some basic maintenance mixed in. So initial thoughts on that bag, pretty cool. Fits everything I need. It'll fit under my back seat along with a couple other tools, breaker bar and whatnot. That's my toolkit when I roll out. Uh, of course that doesn't include like an OBD2 reader and other things, but at least in terms of hand tools, that's what I think I would take with me. I think that's really all that's necessary on a relatively like modern low mileage truck. I would probably have to start adding specialty tools if I knew that there was a weak point in the vehicle that I might have to address. So fortunately, solid front axle, solid rear axle, obviously. It's a pretty stout vehicle. Um, I say that, hopefully I don't get a surprise on the trail. Anyways, uh, upcoming videos. Hope to have the topper in the next couple of weeks. A little bit of delays from um, Snap Outfitters, but it is what it is. Uh, and then I wanna do a little talk on is Trades and Power Wagon a better steal, a better deal than a Power Wagon? Uh, even with the craziness that our truck prices these days. So hope you're getting back out there. I look forward to getting out there soon. Um, be well, praying for safe trips, and um, look forward to talking to you again soon. Have a good one.